So everybody wants answers regarding social security. Well, I have those answers for you. And I have those answers simply because yesterday, on Friday, August 4th, the Congressional Budget Office, they released answers uh, to questions for the record, okay? I wanna show you this, okay? Look at this right here. This is their report, okay? This is from the Congressional Budget Office, a nonpartisan uh, analysis for the US Congress. It says, answers to questions for the record following a hearing on Social Security's finances, all right? This is conducted by the Committee on the Budget uh, for the United States Senate, all right? This was published on August 4th, 2023. But what you need to understand about this is that this is actually from, okay, look at this right here. This is actually from July 12th, 2023, all right? So keep that in mind. And this was done, uh, see it says right here, the Senate Committee on the Budget uh, convened a hearing at which Philip uh, Swagel, the director of the Congressional Budget Office, testified about Social Security's finances after the hearing. Okay, Chairman Sheldon White, uh, Whitehouse, uh, there's Chuck Grassley, Senator Ron Wyden. Okay, they submitted questions for the record. That's what we're gonna go over today. We are going to go over what the questions were and what their answers were. This is very big because this is why I've been bringing all this stuff back regarding Social Security because it's time. We are now starting to figure out and realize that now that more people are discussing Social Security, there's more uh, proposals possibly coming very soon. This means we are getting closer to having these negotiations, and that's really good news. So if you enjoy these daily updates regarding uh, our economy, regarding Congress, regarding uh, you know, Social Security and the American people, let me know. All you gotta do is hit that like button. First off, it really does help out the channel, but also it lets me know you do want more updates regarding Social Security. So let's get right down to what some of these things are saying, okay? So here we go. Here is one of the questions. This is from Senator Whitehouse. This is a question about the economic effects of the new tax on higher income people and increases in Social Security benefits for retirees. The question says, if Congress were to enact a social security tax on the incomes of very high uh, wealthy people, very wealthy people for whom each additional dollar of income is more likely to be saved than spent to fund social security benefits for the retirees, who are more likely to spend than save? What would the effect on the economy be from accounting for the distribution of the of the revenue for to social security beneficiaries please discuss the situation under current law where benefits would be limited to payable benefits after insolvency rather than following cbo's baseline convention that assumes scheduled benefits would be paid despite the lack of legal authority okay well here is the answer this is what he had to say, okay? He says, in a report, uh, in a recent report, CBO estimated the economic and budgetary effects of limiting social security benefits to what is payable from dedicated funding sources following the projected exhaustion of the combined old age, old age survivor and disability income. It's OA, uh, SDI, that's what they're, you'll, we'll see it multiple times in this report, and the trust fund for fiscal year 2033. Uh, goes on to say, uh, under that payable benefits scenario, that required reduction in total annual social security benefits after the trust funds balances reach zero amounts to 25% in 2034, and increases to 28% in 2053, relative to the amounts uh, in CBO's long-term budget projections, known as the extended baseline for its analysis, CBO assumed that all existing and new OA SDI beneficiaries would experience the same percentage reduction in benefits as the overall percentage reduction. So, 
Here's what it also says. In short term, there we go. In short term, the decline in Social Security benefit payments would cause consumer spending to decrease, savings to increase, as some people say, more for retirement, and overall demand for goods and services to decline. The near-term uh, result would less uh, would be less output than in the extended baseline projections in which scheduled payments are assumed to be made. In the long term, output would be greater than it is in the extended baseline, mainly as a result of three factors, increase in supply of uh, labor, increase in private investments, following an increase in private savings, and an increase in uh, quantity of funds available for private investment following a reduction of borrowing by the federal government. Now, I could go on, I could read the, the next couple you know, paragraphs, um, but one of the things I'll do, I will post a link uh, down in the description box below so you can go and read this entire thing, but there are some more questions here, okay? And I wanna get to some of those as well. Look at this right here, okay? It says, this is from Senator uh, Chuck Grassley's question about the effects of Social Security on the federal budget and debt. It says, how does Social Security affect the federal budget and federal debt? The answer, right here. Most public discussions and reports about the federal budget address the unified budget, which encompasses all the activities of the federal government, including activities related to the Social Security program since 2010, Social Security outlays have exceeded dedicated revenues. Okay, uh, Social or Security payroll tax and some of the income taxes on Social Security benefits. CBO estimates estimates that in fiscal year 2023, that's this year, outlays will exceed revenues by 145 billion dollars, increasing the unified budget deficit by that amount. In CBO's projections, the shortfalls in the Social Security program grows, thus contributing to the projected growth in unified deficits. Pretty clear. Especially when outlays are going to exceed revenues by $145 billion in one single year. This is part of the problem. This is why we could become insolvent within the next 10 years. Okay? So that's that, that's that question. Again, if you want to know more about it, you want to get into the specifics and hear more of their answers uh, or their answer, then I will put the link down in the description box below so you, so you can go and read it. Okay, here let's get to the next one. This is, again, Senator Chuck Grassley's question about the differences between the shortfalls projected by CBO and the Social Security trustees. Question. CBO and the Social Security trustees uh, each produce estimates of Social Security finances. And while both of the, the project, uh, while both of you project a shortfall that will need to be addressed soon, you differ on the exact size of the problem. What are some of the reasons for the differences in your projections? Well, the answer. The CBO and the Social Security trustees each produce independent projections of the financial status of the Social Security system. In both projections, Social Security faces a significant financial challenge, though the magnitudes of the uh, expected shortfalls in the trust funds over the next 75 years differ. A feature of CBO's work is that the demographic and economic forecasts used for its projections of Social Security's finances are consistent with those used in the agency's baseline projections and for other purposes. I want to read you a couple of things really quick. In 2019, CBO published a report that examined the differences between CBO's and the trustees' projections of key demographic and economic factors and how those differences contributed to the difference in projections of the Social Security system's finances. According to the report, CBO projected larger shortfalls in Social Security finances, and the difference stemmed mainly from uh, differences in four key factors, projections of the population, components of growth, of gross domestic product, earnings subject to Social Security payroll taxes, and real interest rates. That is, interest rates adjusted to remove the effects 
of inflation. All right. So you see the answers. You see kind of they're going back and forth. Okay. Yes, the, the senators, they want answers. Why is there a difference here? What they're trying to do, just to give you an idea, um, and and this is a, you can see it right here. This right here, it's a seven page report, okay? Here it is. This is the full report. Well, obviously one page is blank, but this is a seven page report right here that uh, just, you know, some of their answers or their questions and some of their answers, okay? This is it. Now. The reason I bring this up is actually pretty simple. Number one, uh, lawmakers are trying to figure out if, if there's differences between the CBO and the, the trustees, right? Their, their funds. Like, why is there a difference in projections? Is it's the same thing, they're going off the same numbers. Why is there a difference? Um, the other thing that they're trying to figure out is it, they're trying to pinpoint certain places where we might be able to find a, a bipartisan agreement. Could we tax the higher income individuals and businesses? If we can, what should that tax be? Should we incentivize people? Um, should, we, should we find a way to uh, bring in additional revenue? Should we cut uh, additional you know, tax credits? The, the, what they're trying to do is pinpoint different ideas and start with those but by taking a partisan view and whether it's republican or a democratic uh, approach it's going to be a non-starter for the other party so what it seems like they're trying to do here is they're trying to use this uh this non-partisan group the congressional budget office the cbo they're trying to use them to figure out what they have to say and how what they have to say could potentially be used to start the negotiations to improve Social Security, but also ensure it doesn't become insolvent within the next 10 years. So that's kind of where we're at right now. The big news though, this was just released. This was just released yesterday on August 4th. You can see that right here. This was the date it was released. And I'm just telling you, uh, this was done about a month ago, okay? This was done about a month ago. This is when the hearing happened, and we've seen videos, we've seen uh, you know some statements that were made, but now we actually have the exact questions and the exact answers. So the good news is we are getting this stuff, it's now coming out, which means we are likely to see the lawmakers use this, okay? Use this right here, this thing, okay? The answers to questions for the record, they're gonna use this to their benefit. They're gonna use this to try to figure out a way to put together some type of bill. Now, whether that's gonna happen this month in August or in September, October, November, we don't know. But my expectation, my guess, is that this is just gonna start the negotiations, so we should have some answers fairly soon. So, as soon as we get answers to all of our questions and not just this from the CBO, I promise I will fill you in on all the latest news and updates. All you gotta do is two things. First off, hit the like button. It really does help out the channel and consider subscribing so you never miss an update. That is what we know as of today. Again, thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.